Hi everyone, I'm Kenya. Uh, we met earlier, remember? Uh, my talk, Placing Your Order with Go Routines. So I'm a cloud software engineer at CloudReach. What does cloud software engineer mean? Uh, that means for me that I'm a front end developer. I usually code with React and currently with Vue. And um, <laughs> it's great, it's fine, you know. Uh, and I'm a Go for newbie. So this year I took it upon myself to learn Go because I heard so many great things about it. And um, if you were here earlier for the panel, you heard that I came from like a different origin story. Like I didn't go to school for computer science, so um, picking up languages, I learned Ruby, PHP, some WordPress, and now JavaScript. And so I haven't really done a language with uh, type scripts or type systems um, or concurrency or a language that was so powerful like C Sharp and Java. So I was like, okay, I'll pick up Go. And so this year, that's what I've been doing on my free time. Uh, so the point of this talk, uh, number one is to confuse you because I will be using an analogy, but sometimes I get really excited with analogies. And then as I'm talking, I'm like, oh, here's another analogy. And then um, I'll try not to do that, <laughs> but it might happen. And then I'll confuse myself because I always do. <laughs> but at the end, you should know what gophers are. What are gophers? Gophers are the Go programming language smack mascot. Uh, so this right here, this guy, he's a gopher. He's the couch potato gopher. And um, Ashley McNamara, she has a GitHub with all these gophers that she designs. And so she's fantastic and she does great, great stuff for the Golang community. Uh, FYI, Go is also referenced as Golang because when you Google Go, a lot of different stuff shows up because it's a verb. So when you, <laughs> when, you, when you search anything Go programming language related, you gotta say Golang. Golang, FMT package, Golang, dev packages, et cetera, et cetera. Um, what Golang code looks like, I'm gonna go through like a little demo with you and um, so you'll get to see kind of like the syntax. Uh, and I'll be talking, of course, of one of the many good things about Go, uh, which is concurrency. Uh, this is what this talk is about, just concurrency and how Go does it. All right, so I'll get started. Technological advances. So this is the Apple One computer. And now this is today uh, the typical developer computer that everybody has. Well, not everybody, but you know, a lot. Um, and I wanted to bring this up because um, our hardware throughout the years has evolved, improved, and is extremely powerful today. And uh, I just wanted to start off with that because, and talking about how powerful our hardware is. So in 1974, an Intel processor had a CPU clock rate of 3.125 megahertz. And um, it, wasn't, it wasn't that powerful, but it, we still made it work in 1974. Uh, today, an Intel Core i9 processor has a CPU clock rate of 4.4 gigahertz. So 4.4 gigahertz in megahertz is 4,400 because it's times 1,000. Uh, so it's a huge jump from going from three to 4,400. Um, and uh, yeah, a lot has changed. We have very powerful computers nowadays. Uh, I remember back in the day when I used to play like video games and like our computers would heat up. <laughs> and like nowadays we have really powerful computers that don't do that too much. I mean, they still do, but just not as much. Um, uh, on a regular basis, this is on a daily, uh, like on, on a regular day. Uh, these are all the programs I've had open. And uh, to the computer, these are processes. And um, really, even though I have a very powerful computer, I still have 85% of it like idle. I'm not really utilizing the whole thing. Um, but th that's just me. Some of you are gaming at work, I don't know. So computers have evolved, but one thing that has them is programming languages. Uh, they just haven't kept up. Uh, and the programming languages still don't a lot of them don't utilize the, the resources that uh, the hardware they run in. Uh, so that's where I'll start talking about concurrency. What's concurrency? Well, according to Wikipedia, the best source online, 
In computer science, concurrency refers to the ability of different parts or units of programming algorithms or problems to be executed out of order or in a particular order without affecting the final outcome, aka things have to go in a certain order so for them to work. So if we're making API calls, sometimes we need to get the results back before we can make another API call, et cetera. Any questions about that? Has anybody not known concurrency? Isn't it, I would be so pissed though, like getting all the way there. Look at that guy's face. He's like, no. Okay. <laughs> so concurrency debate, multi-threading versus single threading. Um, and then this is just cute Jeff. <laughs> but what is single threading? In this talk, the my analogy is food ordering. So um, single threading, we're gonna think of it as uh, ordering at a food truck. So when you go to a food truck, one, one at a time, people. No, no taking orders multiple times, you know? Everybody places their order and then they wait on the side and so on. Uh, Multi-threading is more like a restaurant. Uh, there are multiple waitresses taking different orders and taking it to the kitchen. And then the kitchen decides how it's gonna handle it. Uh, so. <laughs> but many things can go wrong uh, if there is no management. If we are just taking orders as, right, and doing whatever we want, you know, there can be chaos. There needs to be management. There needs to be a scheduler. So. Again, a single threading, events happen one at a time. There needs to be some kind of scheduling process. And this is as an example. In JavaScript, there are async functions. Uh, so async functions operate asynchronously via the event loop, which I tell you it could be its own topic, its own like course in, in college. Uh, using an implicit promise to return its, its return. So basically in JavaScript, um, everything goes kind of one at a time. So like I mentioned earlier, you need to say await this API call and then do the rest of it uh, or the rest of what you need to do with the results that return. Uh, I'm multi-threading. Oh no, my GIF didn't work. It was like a synchronous Olympic swimmers, it's okay, whatever. <laughs> but events happen in parallel or at the same time or synchronously, whatever helps your mind uh, understand this. So, and it also needs some kind of scheduling process. In Golang, there are Go routines, which are threads that are scheduled by the Go scheduler. They're managed and run by the Go scheduler. Uh, and channels are usually how the Go routines communicate. So I'll go more in depth here. Go routines. Again, they're threads. They're functions capable of running concurrently with other functions. And they're basically like waitresses taking orders from different people at a restaurant. Uh, so here's my demo, and this is where everything will go wrong. <laughs> because I'm in the wrong place, okay. So this is the Go Playground, and um, this is to risk, to not risk uh, a disaster in this demo. Uh, but Go routines, here they give you like a very fancy explanation. I'll just show you, uh, explain this file, and then just talk to you through it, talk you through it. So uh, goroutines.go is the name of this file. Package.main is what ev you put at the top of every ex executable Go file. Here you import all your packages. And then this is a function called say. This is the function that will run main function. So in this main function, it will run say with the word world, and this is the go routine. And then we also call again say, but with hello. So let's see what happens when we're not using go routines. Again, uh, I didn't explain what function does, uh, what say does. So say just prints out the word we're passing through. So let's run this. So here it printed out all the worlds and all the hellos. And it printed out five of them because this here is a loop and it will run five times and all it does is print the string that we're passing through. Very simple, okay? I hope it's simple, I'm sorry. So what happens when you make one of them a go routine? Uh, well, mo most likely it will also make both of them run together at the same time. So world, hello, hello, world, hello, hello. So what's happening here is that they're both trying to print at the same time. 
and that's concurrency or asynchronous <laughs> synchronous concurrency. Okay, so that's threads. Oh my God, why do I keep going back to my Slack? <laughs> Go channels. Now, Go channels provide a way for Go routines to communicate with each other. Uh, uh, they share memory and they also like communicate when things are blocked and so on. Uh, it's like a telephone network, but not really. Uh, it's more like, you know, the chatter between waitresses, cooks, and customers. Like when, when we ran out of bacon, go tell the clients there's no more bacon. And, and so the waitresses go back and they're like, and so on. And so that's what I like to think of as Go channels, just ways for these threads to communicate. And so now the demo, and now I will not go back to my Slack. Uh, so in this one, I will read a little bit through this. Um, channels, you do have to declare them first. So this is how you declare one. You name it ch. In uh, Go, this is how you declare a variable. You make a channel, and this channel will be receiving integers uh, because uh, Go wants to know what type of data you'll be passing. So, um, and then this uh, channel operator is this arrow, and the arrow usually points in the direction to which the data will flow to. Uh, but you will also have to tell, um, how do I say this? Like you have to let both parties know where, where the data will be going. You have to tell the channel it will be receiving data, and you will have to tell the other variables that they will be sending data to the channel. So it has to be like a communication both ways uh, between them two. Uh, so looking at this code here, again, this is uh, an ex executable Go file. So at the top, there's the package main. Then there's your you importing your package. Here's the function sum. And this function will basically just add up the arrays that you bring in. So, uh, and then let's see here. Here we are declaring our channel. So let me just write here. This is our channel. Oh, declaration. Here we are making two thread calls. So basically this one will be sending half of the array to be added up. And then this other one will be sending the other half to be added up. And then we are assigning the channel to different variables. So one to X and one to Y. And then at the end, we print out both and then the total. So this array in total, it's a 12. But since we're printing out different data split up at the same time, this is how it comes out. Uh, so that's how channels work, um, just a way for threads to communicate with each other. Uh, one last thought on channels is uh, channel buffering. So this is basically a way for to um, maximize or max out uh, how, m how much uh, channels can handle. So sometimes here, I was playing with this. But in this case, I am telling this channel that it will be receiving integers, um, but up only three threads. And so this channel, it's only expecting three threads. Uh, so when I run it, it will print all three. But let's say I create another thread, and I tell it to, ooh, I'm going the wrong way. And I'm telling it, oh my god, what am I doing? And I'm telling it to send it to that channel. Well, it will say it's blocked. Uh, there's no more threads that this channel will, will be communicating with. Uh, and so that, that's just a, a thought for, for the rest that I'm going to keep talking about. So next, <laughs> the Go scheduler. What does the Go scheduler do? It manages all of this stuff that we didn't even cover because it's not even necessary. The scheduler handles everything. <laughs> and by everything, I mean it handles the Go routines, it handles the Go challenge, it, uh, channels, it handles the OS threads and the processors. So basically, all these threads, when they are created in the processors, the scheduler says, oh, there's another processor that's underutilized, so how about you share some of those threads you got with that other processor over there? And so the processor is like, sure, whatever. And so it, it shares its work. And then there are other underutilized channel uh, processors that are like, we don't have any threads to run, and so it'll go and be on the lookout for uh, threads to run. And so, and the scheduler runs all of this. Uh, and also another great thing is that events 
can be traced with the Go execution tracer. And I was going to show an example, but I felt like I would have had to get too in depth. But um, you can basically see with the Go execution tra uh, tracer uh, a file run, and then you can see all the threads it created, and you can see all the processes it had to use up, and you can see just the magic of this Go scheduler. And so back to the concurrency debate, which one's, which one's faster? To be honest, it doesn't matter. I mean, each one has its pros and cons. You know, it depends on your mood. What's your taste? Do you like writing on JavaScript? Do you like writing Go? Um, your time constraints, like, who are you, Facebook? Like, are, how fast do you need to be spitting out data? How fast do you need to, how, how much time do you have to just, um, how do I say this? to utilize all your resources, like max out your hardware? Uh, do you have that kind of workforce to go out there and maximize everything for you? Um, not everybody does, and that's why concurrency is not always a priority, but for huge companies, it is. Um, and it all depends on how many kitchens you have, and by that I mean it depends on how many processors you have. Nowadays, we have a lot of processors. Um, so it is something to think about, like how am I really uh, maximizing my code and making sure that it's running as, po as fast as it could. Uh, it, it all depends on everybody. Um, so in the end, it depends on your needs. It depends on what the company lets you do. It depends on your company's needs, you know, everything. Uh, resources, there's, uh, if you want to know more about async functions, the Golang book, uh, the concurrency here, uh, this link, this is where I did that demo. There's also Ashley McNamara's Gophers, in case you're interested in looking at more Gophers here. Hold on. She has a whole library, like she designs all of these. So <laughs> those are Gophers, okay? And then also, if you wanna get really in depth and very technical about the Go scheduler, there's this amazing talk. I saw this at GopherCon this year. Um, and this was an extremely in-depth talk about why the Go scheduler was written the way it is, and uh, like what are the different like what are the different patterns for writing a, a concurrency scheduler and all this stuff. And this was the first talk of the day. And let me tell you, after that, I was like, I'm toast. I can't handle any more knowledge after this. Uh, but it's a great talk. So it's by Kavia Joshi, the scheduler saga. And uh, that's about it. Ah, thank you. <laughs>